Hello everyone and welcome to a new Camera Jabber video. Today I'm speaking to Craig Strong who is the founder of Lens Baby all the way over in Portland, Oregon. Hi Craig, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good Angela. How about you? Good. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, yeah, not too bad all things considering really, but um, yeah, we've, over the last few weeks we've been hearing about how various companies are getting on with the, the current situation. Um, and I thought it'd be interesting to hear how Lens Baby's doing at the moment. Yeah, Lens Baby has gone through, um, I guess this is our 16th year and, or 17th year. And uh, yeah, so we've, we've weathered a few things, but nothing like this. So um, uh, yeah, we had to, in March, uh, see some of our, our best staff take a break. Hopefully we'll be bringing them back soon. Um, but we had already worked on the Velvet 28 uh, and, and gotten it ready for launch. Um, and so we launched that a few days ago and, and that's been going well. Great, so um, the Lens Baby, the Velvet 28 is actually constructed where you are, isn't it, in Portland? Yeah, we do the assembly here from parts that are, are sourced both in the Portland, Oregon area and from China. Um, and so, as you can imagine, the, the supply chain was pretty interrupted for a while mm -hmm. um, from uh, our Chinese suppliers. And uh, so that, that was the initial delays. And then when, when things got uh, turned upside down here, that's been a whole other story. So have you got people working there assembling now? Yeah, in fact, uh, our assembly team... Um, the first thing they did was was kick the rest of us out and say, you don't need to be here, um, just go home. And so we've been really careful. We've got a, a pretty large facility here for the number of people, especially when there's only uh, you know, a handful of people, seven or eight people here doing the assembly and the, and the shipping. Um, and uh, so it's, it's been working out well. We've, we ordered a bunch of masks um, with the, actually with the help of Fundy, uh, we were able to, to get masks to our team and then contribute, um, donate to friends and family and then to some local organizations that needed masks for their patients, so. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So um, um, are you primarily working on the Velvet 28 or is it across the board, all of the products at the moment? It's all the products, yeah. We've been able to um, just kind of stay right at the edge of going out of inventory of a lot of things uh, through the uh, through the downturn and the, the interruptions in, in the supply chain. Um, but we've we've pretty much got everything, uh, at least a couple of everything in house so that when when photographers are out there wanting to to do photography at home uh, and try something new, uh, they're Fortunately for us, they're continuing to turn to Lens Baby to, to give them something creative. Great. Now, there's probably some people aren't aware of Lens Baby. I know lots and lots of people are. I've got one of the original Lens Baby optics here. Could you just mm -hmm. explain a little bit about the concept of Lens Baby and where it came from? So I know it was originally yeah. your idea. Yeah, that's that goes back to 2004. What you got there, and in um, let's see. February 22nd of 2004 at, in Las Vegas, um, my business partner Sam and I showed up at a trade show. We had no idea what we were in for and um, you know, we just kind of took a chance, bought a booth and uh, I, had, I had been making those lenses for myself and right. the, the accordion, which is a vacuum cleaner hose, uh, as it turned out, was yeah. Uh, was just a way for me to block out the light and see if the the lenses that I already had uh, could create an interesting image. And then once I put it together, not only was it an interesting image, but uh, it was it was a focusing mechanism that really had some magic to it. So as you as you squeeze it, you focus. As you it. as you tilt, the sweet spot of focus because it just has one area of sharp focus moves around the image and uh and it's all just kind of one continuous dance that you you have and you know, fortunately with digital photography because uh, i don't think that lens would have been all that popular on film with digital photography you can take 100 images and only expect you know five or ten of them to be 
you know, tack sharp, uh, which is about what you can expect with uh, with the original lens baby. It got a little bit better with the 2.0 because it was inherently a sharper lens, um, but still that kind of constant movement where you weren't you weren't able to recreate any particular image because everything was in motion. Um, that that process became uh, really kind of beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I I used this. Um, to do a load of behind the scenes images at a, I think it was at PMA actually, you remember the, the Photo Marketing Association show? And I had some great fun because like you say, you just bend it and you can pull it and squish it and you get some really interesting results. It's kind of like um, uh, a tilt lens, isn't it? Kind of tilt shift lens, with a, but simplified. Exactly, yeah. The the fact that you can move the, the lens out of parallel with your sensor, um, is is similar to a tilt shift lens those early lenses especially um, because they had a curved field of focus had a different look than than what you could get from a, a really expensive tilt lens um, and then we've gotten back to uh, having a wide variety of different effects not just that one effect right and over the years the concept has evolved and you do quite a range of lenses now don't you we do yeah we do standalone lenses um, that that are are more like a traditional um, lens like the velvet 28 is that that allow you to do manual focus and it, it's it's a complete lens so when i put this on here um you know i've got i've got what you would expect from any lens uh, and then we have an optic swap system that has lens bodies which have the option of tilting uh, and focusing and then an optic that has the glass and the aperture system that you can swap out um, I think we've got four main effects. We've got the sweet spot, like that original lens baby. Uh, we have the edge, which are highly corrected flat field lenses that create that tilt shift or view camera look uh, when tilted. Um, we have the twist, which is a Petzval design, which creates a swirl in the background, uh, depending on your subject to background and camera to subject distance. And then we have uh, the velvet line, uh, which gives you a uh, beautiful velvety glow over the top of tack, tack sharp detail at the brightest apertures. And then as you stop down, it gives you a traditional lens look. Um, depending on which one you're looking at, it can be with the Velvet 28, it's, it's tack sharp corner to corner. Um, and with the Velvet 56 and 85, you get kind of a nostalgic edge effect with tack sharp in the center. So the, the 56 and 85, they are obviously aimed at uh, primary portrait photographers, one for full frame and the other for smaller format. And then, um, right? They're, they're actually both for full frame and, okay. and are, as you change your format to smaller sensors, the effect actually gets stronger. So there's, there's a benefit there for even the micro four thirds where they can get a stronger effect because they're essentially increasing the size of the glow. Um, and, you know, anytime we bring out a lens, we think it's going to be used for a particular thing. And then our users go out and use it for all sorts of crazy stuff. So I would say that the Velvet 56 is, is um, probably used a little bit more for macro and street photography than right. portraits. Uh, and then all of our Velvet lenses go down to one to two macro without any accessories. So uh, they're all great macro lenses, um, but the 85 obviously for full frame is, is uh, you know, the, the choice of most um, for, for traditional portrait focal length. So what do you think the 28 will be popular for? Oh my goodness. As soon as I say it, uh, our users are going to do something totally <laughs> different. But yeah. uh, what I've found is, you know, having a 28 that goes, that focuses down to one to two macro, um, you know, you're just, you know, about that close away, that far away when you're, uh, when you're at minimum focus, uh, that gives a, uh, our macro users, uh, some context to their images. You know, the background may not be as smooth, but uh, in terms of the bokeh, but you're, you're able to put your subject into its world. And uh, a lot of time macro photography, it just, you've just isolated one thing and that's all you can see. Uh, the other aspect of this, lens that I'm super excited about is, like I said, as you stop it down, the effect goes away and you get a, just a beautiful corner to corner sharp lens that um, 
that gives you that variability. So you can have a very ethereal glow with the brighter apertures. And then as you stop it down, it, it just becomes prime lens sharp, uh, corner to corner, even on full frame. So it's, it's a pretty versatile lens. I'm not sure what people are going to use it for, but I think it's going to be pretty versatile. Now, I noticed that you've got yours there on a, an SLR. I do. And that's, that's how I first started using lens babies. But I think they are especially well suited to mirrorless cameras, aren't they? Because they're manual focus and you can set um, the, the electronic viewfinder to enlarge when you start focusing or you can, and you can have things like focus peaking working, which can really, really help. Yeah, very much. And uh, I, I started using Micro Four Thirds back in, I don't know, 2008. I got the GH1 and that really opened my eyes to what could be done through an electronic viewfinder because if you're in a dark room, it brightens things up so you can focus. You, Like you said, you've got the focus peaking that on some of our lenses works great. On velvet, you have to stop down to five, six to get rid of the glow for it to be accurate. Um, but then you're also able to zoom in, you know, change a function button to be able to just zoom in on the center and then know that you're getting the detail. And, and uh, yeah, there's a learning curve with lens babies. And, and I find that that learning curve is shortened by all the tools that the mirrorless give that were not accessible on, on DSLRs. Yeah. Now, I, one of the things that I really like about lens baby uh, lenses is that you are getting your creativity in camera. I mean, I, I enjoy editing images, uh, make no mistake, but sometimes you just want to go out and you have a bit of fun and to be able to see what you're going to get as, as the final result is really nice. You know, you, you position where the, the blur is and that kind of thing. And with the manual focus and um, adjusting the apertures, you know, you can move around and get different effects. And it's, it, it puts you very much in the moment. You know, it's, people talk about mindful photography and I think lens baby lenses really help you do that. I agree. And, and the process, whatever process we use, um, you know, there's, I think there's, if, if the process is your point, then the, the end product, um, has that kind of soulful aspect to it that it points back to more of an organic uh, feel when you're using film or when you're you're using a particular lens to get an effect uh, but but i think the biggest difference is that when i go out and i get this from a lot of lens baby users and i'm looking through a particular piece of glass um, and and seeing the world in that way that I'm, I'm capturing moments very different than if I'm going out thinking ahead of what am I gonna do to this later in post. Um, and so if, I'm, if I connect with the kind of images that I see through a particular lens more than I do through a perfect lens that I'm going to make you know, less perfect later, um, then those are the images that I'm, I'm, um, I'm allowing myself to take when I, when I go out um, that are not otherwise accessible. So the, that, all that to say, uh, the kinds of images I shoot through a lens baby are very different than what I shoot through a normal lens. So I, I enjoy going out and seeing what surprises me, what I'm able to see that I can't see with other lenses. Yeah, and I think while um, a lot of enthusiasts enjoy the process of using a lens baby as well as the end results, it's actually interesting because quite a lot of pros use them. I know quite a few wedding photographers who like to use them to get something that is a bit different from everything else. Yeah, we, uh, that was our initial target was, was wedding photographers. Cause I started out in newspapers and had a freelance business to magazines for several years before getting talked into shooting weddings and loved shooting weddings. But, uh, for me, I came up with the lens baby because my, my journalistic style, I was like, okay, what else am I going to learn? I, I applied what I learned from newspapers to magazines and then from magazines to commercial and then from commercial to weddings. And it was like, okay, let's broaden this and let's look outside of what I've been doing all along. Uh, and so we expected that, that wedding photographers would, would do, do more work with, with lens baby than most in, in the industry. Um, and that was initially the case, but it, it's really kind of blown up into other, other genres as well. Um, you know, it, what's great about 
using a lens baby at a wedding is sometimes you're at a mass that that goes for 90 minutes and, and you've gotten all the shots you you, you need and and you know there's going to be 30 minutes left before the kiss and before anything important and you're able to to pull out something creative and and take those safe shots and reshoot them uh in a more risky way and get something that i find that my clients tend to really connect with later and and choose those images over the 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 normal images um and yet we've got both to share and and so we've covered our butts and and given given the clients more of a choice so yeah yeah i know um robert Pugh uh is a professional photographer he uses uh, he does exactly what you said for engagement shoots quite a bit oh, so really? he'll shoot the you know the straight images and then he'll say to the couple right let's try something a little bit different if you're up for it and he'll take a few shots and he can actually show them the effect on the camera and he says you know the reaction when they see what they're going to get they get very excited and then they start to get much more interactive images yeah robert's work is fantastic and and i love that he does that because uh in in my experience when you show something to a client that they weren't expecting that can surprise them, one, it, it, it raises the value of your photography significantly. And two, they tend to choose those. You know, you've had, you've had 45 minutes or an hour or, or more to develop that rapport. You've gotten all the shots that you came for and now you get to surprise the client and you're in that kind of flow already in that relationship and the intimacy that you've developed developed there. Uh, I love the fact that Lens Baby can be part of that process and you know, kind of at the the sweet spot literally of of the shoot. Fantastic. Now, when do you think the Velvet Twenty Eight will be available in the UK? Uh, it's a. I believe it's already available through WEX, although because of everything going on right now, I'm sure that uh, we haven't been able to ship them a ton. Um, but WEX, if they aren't selling it already, should be very soon. Okay, that's great. I, I, I looked yesterday and it was uh, showing us pre-order, but okay. um, that was sort of immediately after the announcement. So uh, it might have changed now to order. Yeah, well, <clears throat> if anybody from WEX is, is looking at this, we're doing our very best to get you inventory uh, through all of the, uh, the manufacturing um, issues that, that this global pandemic has, has created. Yeah, okay. And it's going to be available in just about all mounts, isn't it? It is. Yep. Great stuff. Well, Craig, it's been wonderful talking to you. Um, good to talk to you, It's good to, you to hear too, that Angela. things are going okay. And I'm looking forward to having a play of the Velvet 28 when it becomes available over here. Yeah, me too. Can't wait to get it in your hands. <laughs> Thanks very much. You Speak bet. soon. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.